Hi, Errol. Justin Stroh here, return, uh, returning your <laughs> returning your message. Actually, actually not returning your message, but actually responding to your message uh, on my claim that I do not worship Mary or that Catholics do not worship Mary. And I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible um, responding to you, but I, I do want to make sure to respond to you. So, um, first of all, I just wanted to uh, say God bless you, and I hope that uh, uh, there's peace in your life right now. So, um, first of all, you say that uh, that I don't know when I'm crossing the line between hyperdulia and latria, um, and then you cite the Hail Holy Queen as being a prime example. Well, the Hail Holy Queen in no way is a prime example of this, and let me show you. Um, first of all, I know the difference between hyperdulia and latria. Latria is the worship of God, worship of God that is due only to God. And when I look at Mary and I see her, I see her as one that I can be devoted to just like I am devoted to my wife, except it's a different type of devotion, obviously. Um, and so uh, that's really what we're talking about here. We say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And that's the whole point of the whole prayer right there, is that we want her to show us the way to Jesus, just like I want you to show me the way to Jesus. Except with Mary, it's a little different because she is the mother of Jesus. She's the closest companion, um, being his mother to Jesus Christ. She's really the first Christian. Um, you say nowhere in Scripture does it say that we need to go to Mary, uh, and when uh, then Mary will go to Jesus, and so on and so forth. Um, actually, if you want to uh, turn to the wedding feast at Cana in your sacred scripture, you'll notice that um, this is a classic example of what Catholics are talking about. Mary goes to Jesus and says, Son, they have no more wine. She, it's, it's, she's inaugurating his new ministry. She's basically saying to him, it's time to go public, and this is the place, the time is now, the place is here. And Mary um, says this to Jesus. He responds, and Mary says, do whatever he tells you. And so right here we see that the, basically the uh, the scripture writer is showing us that this is um, um, that that Jesus has set an example here that he listens to Mary and that Mary points us to Jesus and asks us to be obedient to him. It doesn't sound like uh, we're putting Mary before Jesus. We're actually sounds like we're saying that Mary uh, leads us to Jesus uh, in a in a very human way. Um, so, uh, next thing, you say God chose Mary to be a blessed vessel to carry his son and nothing more. Um, blessed vessel to carry his son. We call that motherhood. Um, he chose her to be his mother. And that is, you know, when you say nothing more, it kind of makes it sound like as if there was, if it is if that were nothing. And of course, the, I, uh, you know, I would just take offense to that because really, motherhood is something, there's no greater vocation on earth, really, than motherhood. Um, uh, and and I have seen my own wife bear, ch bear my children into this world, and so I know that the vocation of motherhood and how profound it is to suffer for the life of your own children and how profound that is. But uh, I give you the benefit of doubt here and think, you know, that you weren't really going that direction. Um, but Mary is more than uh, a vessel um, although I would agree with the word vessel, I don't have a problem with that. But she definitely is more than a vessel. Uh, take a look at uh, the uh, crucifixion of Jesus. One of his very last words that gets recorded in sacred scripture, which would make it probably one of some of the most important things that Jesus said, was, Behold your mother. He said this to who? The beloved disciple, St. John. Who is the beloved disciple? Really, he's all of us. We're all the beloved disciples of Jesus. We follow him, right? And so he says to those who follow him, Behold your mother. Behold your mother. And uh, really, that's what I want to invite you, uh, Errol, to do, is to, to behold her. Not to worship her, but to behold her, to have a devotion to her, to see her as a woman who has, uh, who's a part of your life and a part of the plan of God in your life. Um, you go on to say, Jesus said that uh, he is the only way to the Father. He did not tell us to go to his mom, plain and simple. Uh, scripture also teaches that there is one mediator and one advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. Um, uh, yes, I agree with you. 
he uh, does he is the only mediator and advocate to the father but as catholics we're not saying that that jesus or that mary is the mediator to the father but she's the mediator definitely to jesus and we see that at the wedding feast of cana and we see jesus um appointing her really in a very uh, unique sense from the cross um so in this unique role and you really see this played out in the passion of the christ you know watch that movie with this understanding and you'll see really that's what you know that's what catholic devotion to mary is all about is what's in that film um yeah so i think about one of the things to think about is that mary is the mother of christ the daughter of god and the spouse of the holy ghost this is a unique trifold relationship that god mary has with god and uh, it is a um a relationship that we're all called to have um in a unique way mary was literally the mother of jesus and of course everyone is a daughter or son of god and then the spouse of the holy ghost mary was the spouse of the holy ghost how do we know this well god is not going to have children outside of wedlock think about it god chose mary to be his spouse and mary was completely open to him open to him that would be marriage and in that marriage she uh, received the holy spirit and because she received the holy spirit jesus became flesh and dwelt among us hmm interesting i mean really this is incredible beautiful uh reality of our faith that we are called uh, as christians to bear christ to the world um that uh we are all called as sons and daughters of god to receive the holy spirit and bear jesus to the world that's mary she did in a literal sense we we're called to do it uh, in a spiritual sense she did it in a physical sense i should say um, but we are all called to do it so yeah it does include mary <laughs> and we're called to include mary um you say that mary veneration is adultery plain and simple i say to you that there's a difference between the word veneration and adultery you're equating them i think that's a logical error um, veneration and adultery are two totally different things um we call her the queen of heaven uh just like the pagans called ishtar i would uh, you know we know that mary is not ishtar uh ishtar is somebody else mary is the mother of jesus um, and if you want to look at uh, archetypes of the Old Testament, um, basically foreshadowing Mary, I would say look at the Ark of the Covenant and reflect on what the Ark of the Covenant is. Uh, what are the three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant? Uh, the manna from heaven, the staff of Moses, and pieces of the uh, Ten Commandments, the stones of the, or the Ten Commandments. At one time, these all were in there. And what are all of these things? These are all uh, symbols of Jesus. Uh, they were, they basically point to the future of who Jesus will be. He is the bread come down from heaven. That's uh, John chapter 6. He is the fulfillment of the law. And uh, he is, um, um, he is, he has the authority. Okay, and that's the rod of Moses, that authority. He's a teacher. And um, so Mary is like the Ark of the Covenant. She holds Jesus in her womb and bears him to the world. And just as the Ark of the Covenant was the main weapon, if you will, of the Israelites, so Mary is God's main weapon, if you will, against Satan. Um, and, uh, and, and that's a model for us. We're all called to be like her, um, just like Mary crushes the head of the serpent by her, by her fiat and yes to the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's reflected again in Revelation chapter 12. Uh, you see her as the Queen of Heaven there and uh, crowned with stars. 12 stars the 12 tribes of israel uh, and that would be her mary and defeating uh satan by her fiat to the holy spirit so um that's a little bit about mary for you uh god bless you i look forward to your response and um pray for me please